Hello guys, how are you? Oh, it's wonderful being back here again. Yes, I don't live in Melbourne anymore. Um, I decided it was too cold down here, so I moved up north to Townsville, and now I'm dying. It's like 36 degrees, feels like 45 and 87% humidity at the moment. So I'm very glad to be down here in Melbourne. And you thought it was hot today? Uh-uh, that was just lovely. <laughs> Anyway, my name is Deb Candlish. Um, I did live in Melbourne for quite a long time. I come from North Carolina, um, but I did come and live here and got to meet all of the amazing blues um, people here that uh, started me off on my slide journey. Now, most of you are kind of new, I think, but there is uh, the guy who taught me how to play slide guitar was out of a band called Collar Greens and Gravy. And when he, whenever I met him, and he basically became my mentor and I finally had enough courage to ask him to teach me how to play slide. And he um, was so gracious and said, of course I will. Little did he know how frustrating trying to teach a 40 year old woman how to do something new was gonna be. But he did and we bought it and I used to take him home after the gigs cause he didn't drive and I'd save him taxi fares. So um, that's how I started off with the slide guitar. He left us seven years ago uh, with pancreatic cancer and it was a very, very sad uh, day for all of the blues music world in Melbourne and very sad for me cause he was a dear friend too. But on Sunday, we had a tribute to him, and it was the most amazing day of blues artists, all of which, like myself, he had had an effect on and had given himself to in you know, beautiful friendships and music and whatever. Amazing player, and um, it was just a room full of love. So when I was deciding what I was going to do tonight, I decided I'm going to take that tribute just a little bit further and um, I'm going to play a lot of the songs that he taught me in my early days and I'll mix a few of my originals in but um, but basically I'm going to start off with a song that I wrote for him that started off with words way 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 back and then became a song probably 10 years later and uh, it's called Not The One, because although I thought he was really cute, he let me know that he loved me as a friend, but I wasn't the one. <sighs> so, but I, he ended up being the best friend a person could ever have, and I would like everyone to raise their glass and say, we love you and you're, and you're remembered, James. Even if it's, as long as my heart's beating, you're remembered. <laughs> All right, this is called Not The One.
one because we were dear friends and um, I was very lucky in that I got to be with him towards the end of his life and uh, well it was the very end of his life and um, he was such a I, I just want to talk about him a little bit because people know his music they don't know the person he was but at the time that he had found gotten his diagnosis I had just been left by my husband and um, the one silver lining to all that was that I was free to go and spend time with him. But in the end, I realized, you know what, he was taking me on even in his dying days. Sorry, I get a little emotional with this, but he was willing to take my pain on in his dying days just to make sure I knew I was loved by someone and that he loved me very much. And I hope I gave him the same thing, that he knew how much I loved him. But um, anyway, so I said this is going to be a, a continued tribute to him because um, I just want to talk about him because he's a beautiful man and I never want him to be forgotten. And uh, this next song is the very first song he taught me. And it was probably because it's the slowest song I've ever done. <laughs> so uh, sit back, relax, and uh, I hope you have a hanky nearby because it's a very sad song.
you. Thank you very, very much. That is a very sad, that, that is the blues. I forget which blues player it was that said, the blues is about a man and a woman. It ain't about the color chicks. It ain't about, you know, work. It ain't about, it's about a man and a woman. I said in my best southern accent. But, who am I going to do next? Okay. First of all, all right. I've got a few things that I'm wanting to say today. One of which is that there's a beautiful man sitting over here named Ross Mortimer who has been the photographer and recorder of blues music for so many years, it's unbelievable. And it was long before we had live streams and that sort of thing, but he had, he was there with his, his, his big machine, you know, and he'd go home and edit it for hours and hours and put it out, it was great. And I'd just like everybody to give a big hand for Ross Mortimer because he is an amazing, amazing artist in himself. And also, he and his beautiful wife, Oriella, always let me stay at their place when I come to Melbourne from Townsville, which um, saves me a lot of money, but mostly it is that I get to spend time with them. So anyway, thank you, Ross. Anytime. All right. Next song. Story behind this song. I was just starting to play. I was in a band, my first band. Started playing a bit of solo stuff and with duos and whatever, and was just getting to that point where I think I can do this. And then I uh, got that horrible, horrible lettered word, lettered word that uh, nobody wants to hear. That starts with a C. So had breast cancer, and by the time they finally diagnosed it, it was pretty big old lump in the breast and had to have all that removed and stuff, but then I was still only had about a 10 cent ch 10 percent chance of living because it had been too long. And, uh, but I had a great oncologist who uh, put me on terrible chemo for about six months. And the funny thing was, he kept asking me if I drank, and of course, when you're at the doctor, you always say, oh yeah, well, I, I drink socially. But he kept going on and on about it and saying, well, why, you know? Um, and I'm going, why, you know, why? Are you asking me these questions? And finally got the point, he says, I guess, Deb, what I'm asking is, have you ever been so drunk that you prayed to die the next day? And I was like, trying to be honest and said, well, okay, there might have been a few occasions where I felt like that. And he said, good, because I'm about to give you the worst hangover of your life. <laughs> and he did, but I tell you what, 20 years later and I'm still here. So, good on him. I'll take the hangover any day. There's a little song I wrote about all of that and funnily enough, it uh, came out in dance tune form. <laughs>
good. The ones who are always there, they're the ones you want around you. Neither loving in the air, and they change your love. Like they're knocking at your door. But those things you thought you knew don't mean nothing anymore. Like dead knocking at your door. Mark this last uh, October, and um, supposedly I'm cured now. But uh, I just keep living. That's what I say. If you wake up and keep breathing, you're going to keep living, aren't you? All right. So after my um, cancer thing, the one thing I, when I thought I was going to die, I didn't think uh, I was that I, I didn't have many regrets. But I, one was that I'd never recorded music, uh, the music that I was doing. So I had a good friend of mine, Nick Thorpe, who pushed me into it and said, okay, you said you, that was your regret. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it now. So I had him and I had Shorty from Color Greens Gravy as my drummer. And then I had just about every blues musician in Melbourne wanting to be on it. So it turned out to be this huge array. And, and when we had the CD launch, oh my God, we had about 10 people on stage all together. It was great. But um, I just wanna give a shout out to Nick and, and Shorty for, um, helping me get that CD made. Um, tonight, there, I have the absolute last four copies of that. And uh, so if you want to take me home with you, you can. I'm cheap, I'm only 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, now. This is another song I wrote that um, I'm just doing a couple of uh, originals and then I'm going back to my James Roots, but uh, this is one I wrote about uh, a man who decided who I was with and who was got to go on tour overseas and that was all great and wonderful until I found out that he didn't expect to have to stay in a fidelity relationship while he was there. So I wrote this song. <laughs> Do I hold on? Lots of reverb, by the way. Oh, let it fly away. Do I hold on? Oh, Do I let him fly away? Or tell the Lord, do I hold on? Or do I let him fly away? Do I hold on, hold on, or let him fly away? I know he can't pass by, and all I worry is now. 
Um, I play quite a few Memphis Manis, but I love this one the most. I usually play it when I'm here. Um, but uh, James was a, uh, he was very helpful. There was a Memphis Manny tribute. I think you were at that, weren't you, John? And um, he told me then I needed to work on my groove, and he's, he keeps telling me that. That's 20 years ago now. <laughs> but. Um, but anyway, um, James helped me get all of this Memphis Mini music because she didn't particularly play slide onto slide and helped me work out how to do it on slide guitar. And, uh, and then he became my Kansas Joe and we did it together. So uh, if you don't know Memphis Mini, I usually tell the story, but I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna leave it to you to look up. She's an amazing, feisty woman from the 1920s. This is a song she wrote, it's uh, all about Family love.
I told you it was all about family love. <laughs> So uh, how they let it on the airwaves then, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I don't know if you heard, but they were trying to get Baby It's Cold Outside delisted from the radio play because it might be a bit dirty. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to, before I take this guitar off, I just want to let you know that what I have there, normally I have a, a big acoustic round beast with me, but um, this is a very special occasion for James. And this is the guitar he left me. It's a beautiful, beautiful Fender Telecaster with the F-hold. Very dirty and um, a very, very seldom will fly it anywhere, but this was a special occasion. So, and of course his name is James. So everybody say hey to James. <laughs> All right, I am gonna change guitars to do another key, but um, yeah, stay with me. I'll be right there. Have a drink, have a quick chat. All right, so we are definitely um, going to go do these last two songs. And these were uh, song number two and three that um, James taught me. And uh, one has become my absolute favorite. It was, it's called Walking Blues, and I always thought it was um, Robert Johnson's turn, but someone taught, I was reading a thing today saying that uh, Sunhouse actually wrote it which is news to me. I think Robert Johnson claimed it. <laughs> it's on his album anyway. Anyway, so this is my favorite song, um, but I do have two more songs, so please don't, um, don't, don't do what I'm telling you to do, okay? <laughs>
was up some hole in my Woke up this morning Oh man, what's going on? But I feel like Feel like blowing the slums up home Woke up this morning All I have was that There's a couple of more uh, thank yous. I just want to say while I'm up here, there's a couple more people I really want to um, thank. One of them is Skip Sale, who was also a very, very special mentor of mine. And um, he taught me my right hand, <laughs> I've always said. James was my left, he was my right. And he was one, he and Sean uh, McCullough were the ones that organized that tribute for James. So I just want to say thank you very much to both of them for doing that, and, um, and uh, I love you, Skip. You, I, I hope you're out there watching me somewhere. And uh, the last ones I really, really, really want to um, thank is John and Em, because they have, ju and Ellie, they've just been wonderful in keeping this NBAS alive, and um, I just want to say thank you, and can I have a round of applause for this beautiful man? And the only other person I really want to um, uh, give tribute tonight is Noel. Um, he is, you know Noel, yeah. He was the beginning, he, he kept the blues alive in this town for so, so many years. And um, we miss him very, very badly. And I know even me, growing up, learning to play at an older age and stuff, he was always at the gigs. He was always at my gig. He was always there giving me, you know, You're, you can do this, Dave, you can do this. So can we have a hand for him too, please? And I love you, Shirley. I hope you're doing great. Anyway, that's me gone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Would, yes, would you like to hear one more? Yes. How do we know that was going to happen? <laughs> Ah, uh, John, love ya! Okay. Alright. 
this is a uh, yet another one that James taught me in the early days. And uh, we're going to go out with this.